Hey there. So I decided I would do something a little bit different today, something a little bit fun. Uh, I've, I've noticed that uh, there's a lot of videos out there that talk about how to make your cooler into a Yeti cooler. And I've noticed that there's other videos where they've shown that the top of a cooler, really, there's nothing inside here. It's just hollow. And what a lot of people have been doing is they've been taking this uh, window sealant and they'll drill holes into the lid and they'll put that window sealant into the lid and fill it up with foam to make the cooler better. The bottom of the cooler seems like it's pretty well sealed, so we're not going to mess with that. The other thing I got is uh, I grabbed this stuff from uh, from the local hardware store to, to seal the top. I've noticed that they usually seal this top around, so when the lid closes, it makes a really nice tight steel, uh, airtight. Not that it isn't airtight now, but it seems like uh, there can be some improvements done. So we're going to we're going to try to improve this by using the sealant and the rubber seal uh, and see if that makes a difference. So I bought two of these coolers. I've got two of them here side by side. I think I paid $17 for each cooler. And we're going to take a bag of ice after we're done. We're going to put it in each cooler. And I think what I'm going to do is it's a pretty hot day here at the end of August. I'm going to put the coolers in my car. There's nothing hotter than a closed up car. And I'm going to let them sit there until the bags of ice completely melt. And we're going to keep checking on them to see if doing these hacks really does anything or anything of significant value to this $17 cooler. So we're going to have one that we're going to leave stock. And that one we're going to end up making all of these upgrades to and see if it does anything. All right, so the first thing I think I'm going to do, I've noticed that this this uh, latch comes off but I'm gonna take this screw out for now and once the screws out I'm gonna remove the lid and then I'm gonna see if I could seal around the top of the lid better than it's sealed right now so we're just gonna take that off this whole piece just comes right off and I think the first step like I said is we're just going to seal all the way around here. What we're going to do is we're going to take our rubber uh, foam that I got here. I wanted to make sure it is water resistant. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to probably cut it because it's a little bit wide. I'm probably going to cut right down the middle here and I'm going to go all the way around the top. So I'm going to go from here all the way around. I'm going to get started doing that and I'll come back and show you the result. This is what the final product looked like when I was done cutting it. And you can see this is how it kind of fits. Looks like it makes a really nice seal. Now it's time to get the foam going. Okay, I'm going to start filling the foam into the holes. I drilled them just big enough to fit the container. And we're just going to fill it till it's full. You know what, actually, I think I'm going to tip it up. So it falls down. And I can actually see it filling. I don't know if you can see it, but it's up at the top right now. So I went ahead and drilled a few more holes in there. I drilled a hole in this area right here and I drilled one at the top of this. So I don't know if I said this, but what you really want to do with this stuff is you want to give it till overnight to dry and you don't want to touch it really while uh, it's, it's being sprayed in there because it gets real, I don't know, sticky or feels weird and I don't think you really want to get it on your hands. But once it's dry, it just breaks off it doesn't hurt you at all so you want to let this stuff dry uh, preferably overnight 
and then do whatever you need to do. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take this stuff out and then we're going to fill in the holes. So you can see they come out really easy and there's usually no mess left behind. It comes off really simple. I'm not trying to support any specific product, but I decided that I would use this stuff. You could see it says that it uh, works fine with water. I think it says water resistant somewhere. Somewhere on here it said that. There we go. Will set underwater. Of course, I'm not setting it underwater, but this cooler will be exposed to some water. So I'm not even sure if it really matters if you plug these little holes in, but I'm going to do it anyway. So I'm going to use this stuff. So it looks like it's pretty simple to use. I read the instructions. Of course, I can't open the box. Maybe the box will tell you how to, how to open it. But anyway, I read the instructions. It basically says that you want to knead this until you get like a uniform color. Once you get the uniform color, then, uh, well, it looks like there's quite a bit here. Once you get the uniform color, then you put it on the spot that you want to use it on. So I think what I'm going to do, I might go get a, a utility knife or something and cut it. I'll be right back. All right. I'm sure I've got more than I need here, but I'm just going to cut off. If you could tell there's different colors, I'm just going to cut off a certain amount here. And then um, what I'm going to do is just knead it with my fingers until I get a good color. And then I'm going to go ahead and put it on the holes. So I'm going to pause the video for a minute and I'm going to come back. Oh, well, actually, maybe I don't need to. It looks like we're almost there. All right. The good news is it's also white. All right. So I'm just going to take a little bit of this. Let me see if I could zoom in. Okay, so here's one of the holes right here. I'm just gonna take a little bit, put it right onto that, smooth it out. And then I'm gonna do all the rest of these. So it looks fairly simple. Well, it looks like I got more than enough. All right, I'm gonna keep messing with this and then uh, I'll let you see the finished product. All right, I want this to look pretty smooth. Right now it doesn't, so I went ahead and got me a spatula, and I'm gonna just do what I can to rake it and make it look nice and smooth. Okay, I went ahead and put the lid back on. I put my screw in over here for this side, and I think we're ready to go. It is noticeably heavier. This is probably right about two or three pounds, whereas the stock cooler probably weighs just a few ounces for the lid. So the lid is noticeably heavier. Now, to talk about the prices, uh, I believe for the weather stripping, I paid probably about uh, seven, maybe eight dollars with tax. I paid about $6 for this and of course you could see you could get a lot more uses out of this. This is just because I didn't have any kind of glue. And then for the the spray, I actually already threw the can away, but for the foam installation, I think that was probably the most expensive item about, uh, no I'm sorry, it wasn't. It was $4.98, so it was $5 for the insulation foam. So I've got almost in these three products as I do have in the cooler itself. So now it's time to put the ice bags in or the bags of ice and uh, put it in the back of my Jeep and uh, we'll see we'll see how it goes so right now it's a pretty hot day it's about uh, 80 some degrees outside probably closer to 100 degrees inside the Jeep and um, we'll put the ice in see how long it lasts and who lasts longer so you can see I have 10 pounds of ice for each cooler and uh, what I what I did is um, I put the stock cooler on the right and I put our modified cooler on the left. You could tell because you could see the little foam right here. I also put one bottle of water in each one. So I'm gonna start by putting the ice in there. We're gonna see what our temperature is. And then I, I expect this is gonna go a couple of days. So I'll be coming out every day to check to see which one stays cold longer. All right.
right, so I hope that uh, our modified cooler wins. You can see that's what it looks like right now. Current temperature says, uh, <laughs> of course, if I hit the ice, it's really cold, but in the car, it's almost 90 degrees. Yeah, 96, and uh, I've got the back open, so when I close this up, this is not going to take too long. All right, so I'm going to close them both down. I'm going to close the lids down. And we'll see how it goes. It does seem like a lot tighter fit on this lid, closing it down versus this one. So I will say that's noticeable. So let's see how it works. Be back in a couple of days, or actually a day. I'm going to come back every day. All right, so it's been just a little over 24 hours. Here's our modified cooler. Here's our standard cooler we didn't do anything to. Let's check to see how our 10 pound bag of ice is doing. All right, so here is the modified cooler. And to be honest, there's almost no ice left in it. This is not gonna last much longer. So you can see that's about how cold it is in here. The water bottle itself looks like it's in the 40s. The water is, uh, looks like in the 40s. Well, 34, 40, so I don't know. That's a pretty far range. So how hot is the car? The car is in the 90s. All right, let's check the other cooler. Okay, the cooler we did nothing to has a ton more ice in it. Something didn't work out right here. And this one shows 30, 30 degrees. The water is 35 degrees. Okay, I think I've got a plan. I know that this is insulated really well. It's even heavier than the one that's over here. So I'm just wondering, could it be this seal? Maybe this seal is making sure that it does not seal as good as it should. Of course, it wasn't designed for this, but you would think that weather stripping would help in this case. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna take off this weather stripping. I'm gonna go get two more 10 pound bags of ice. And we're gonna try this again. We're gonna do one more day. So I'm just gonna start ripping this off. It's probably not gonna come off real easy. No, not too bad. I'm gonna rip it off all the way around. And then we're gonna do the same thing again with uh, two 10, 10 pound bags of ice. And we'll come back and see how that works. All right, here's round two. I got two new bags of ice. This is the cooler that I made modifications to. You can see there's no seal around it anymore. So you can see this is where my uh, holes were drilled. And you can see that I took the seal all the way around it. So now it's the same as the stock cooler. Here's our stock cooler. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the ice in there and we're gonna give it a shot. All right, I just went ahead and put the ice in. So you can see we've got real good amount of ice in both of them. So um, here we go. Like I said, no seal. We'll see if that's the trick, but uh, I'm gonna make sure that it's closed all the way down. The hinge looks good in the back. Nothing there. Here's our stock cooler. Okay, I'm slamming them down just to make sure they're closed. The back hinge here, you can see everything looks good. All right, coming back tomorrow see what the difference is i really hope that our cooler after doing all this work does something better than it did today i, I will say when i dumped the uh, coolers out just a little while ago it was about 30 minutes later than when i came and checked on them there was nothing but water in this and there was still some ice in this one so the cooler is definitely not doing a good job with our modifications all right, so I didn't get a chance to do this recording during the daytime, but I want to get here before the ice is melted. Hopefully it's not. Um, looking at about, I don't know, closer to 30 hours later than 24 hours later. But uh, the one on the left is the cooler that I modified. The one on the right is the standard cooler. Let's open them up and see what it looks like. Okay, so right now the stand or the modified cooler shows absolutely no ice. And it looks like the standard cooler shows ice. So as far as I could tell, to me it looks like the cooler's better if you do nothing to it. I don't think these hacks work. 
Now, maybe you can leave in the comments if you think I did something wrong, but as far as I could tell, the upgrades that I did to this cooler didn't do anything, in fact, made it worse. So if you want a cooler that lasts a long time, it looks like uh, these Yeti coolers or the, I don't know, the Walmart coolers that are built the same way as a Yeti. It, it just seems like maybe that's the way to go. Looks like uh, any of these modifications that I've done haven't really done anything to make the cooler better. If you could think of anything you want me to do with these coolers, maybe to reproduce this issue a different way or try to make something out of this cooler to make it work better than it's working right now just uh, leave some information in the comments and I'll read them and you know maybe I'll do another video thanks for watching I hope this helped you if it did please uh, give us a thumbs up maybe even subscribe check out our other videos thanks